Welcome to 5 Minute Fridays. What we're doing today is something that you guys have asked for. I've been sent a couple of different messages from different social medias saying, Shane, you're talking about iPhone 11 too much. I've got an old phone. How do I do what you're doing? Well, this is how you do it. G'day guys, Shane here. What we're doing today is running through Nightcap app on an iPhone 10. You would have seen on the channel, I do a lot of stuff with the iPhone 11 because it has this awesome mode of the night mode. You can shoot for 30 seconds on this sucker, it's amazing. On the iPhone 10, you never really had that ability. So if you have an iPhone 10 and you wanna follow along with some of the stuff that we do here, this is an app that you probably wanna get. It does a pretty good job. Anyway, let's get into it. So the Nightcap app, it's not free. You gotta pay for that. Is it worth it? Well, I think it costs about $4.95 here in Australia. Over in the States, it probably costs the equivalent of like $1.50 for us because it costs a lot of money to transfer data overseas down to Australia. But anyway, that's a side issue. Is it worth it? Well, if you want to shoot night stuff and you've only got an iPhone 10 or before an iPhone 10, it's probably worth it. All right, let's have a look at this app and see what it does. So let's run through this thing. When we go into the app, first thing you'll see across the top there is you've got some photos that you can go and have a look at. You've got the gear icon, which is the preferences, and you can change some things in there like ISO sensitivity and things like that. Do you need to? Not really. When the app comes out, by default, it does a pretty bloody good job. Next thing across the top there is the flash. Do you need the flash? We're shooting stars. No. Next thing across is the, is the uh, camera that you're going to use. If you touch on that, you've got time-lapse mode. Uh, you've got movie mode and then you go back to the camera. The next one across there, you can turn it around, do a bit of a selfie with stars. Is that going to work? No. Down the bottom is where all the cool stuff's happening down the bottom there. In the star, when you go into the star, it gives you all the options that the camera is going to do almost automatically for you. So you've got long exposure, we'll talk about that in a second. You've got stars mode. Stars mode is, it's going to let you shoot for about 15 seconds, I think is what it is. Um, and it does a reasonably good job. Um, in other videos that I've done, I've compared this to the iPhone 11 night mode, and it doesn't really, well, it stacks up sometimes. Um, and I'll link up the top here to some videos that you might wanna look at if you're into that sort of thing. The next one down is ISS mode. ISS is the International Space Station. Uh, and from the best that I can work out, the ISS mode and the long exposure mode are basically the same thing. Um, light trails is going to be a photo that takes a longer time and you're going to have trails of light. Generally in, in astrophotography, that's something that you kind of want to avoid. The next one down the bottom there is meteor mode. And what that one's going to do, you're going to set it up on a tripod, hit the green for go button, hit the go button, hit the shutter button, and it's going to take a series of photos, the best that it can work out with the exposures of the stars that are falling at the time. So if you keep an eye on the news, you keep an eye on different Facebook groups that are into all that sort of um, astrophotography sort of thing, you're generally going to be alerted pretty quickly that there's a meteor shower coming. So what we're going to do tonight is see if we can capture the Milky Way, the galactic core, that orange gaseous sort of cloud in the Milky Way. Um, we're going to see if we can capture that on an iPhone 10. Can you do it on an iPhone 11? Absolutely. Can you do it on an iPhone 10? Well, we'll find out in just a second. So what you're going to need for this is basically you're going to need a phone holder on a tripod. It doesn't have to be a ball head like this one here. It can be any sort of ball head or any sort of head of the tripod. Basically, you're going to need to be able to uh, loosen it off and move it around and point that phone up to the stars. All right, the camera's on the tripod now. We'll go into the app. The way this app works, if you push, swipe to the left or right, you're going to see that you're going, and down the bottom of the screen, you're going to change the focus. Up the top, you're going to change the white balance. The white balance is how hot or cold that te the temperature of the photo looks. Once we're happy with the focus and we're happy with the white balance there, on the left hand side we've got the ISO and we'll adjust that so it's a bit brighter. What the ISO does is basically makes the sensor a bit more sensitive to light and it'll pick up more light. Because it's pretty dark, we want it to be fairly high. The downside of it is that it can also bring in a lot of digital noise, like static noise through the photo, and we want to avoid that if we can. Now that, that is taking the photo now. We're on long exposure mode, and you can see at the top there, it's counting down that time. We want to go for about 30 seconds. It's okay to go over a little bit. 
But when you do go over, you'll end up with little tails on the stars and we want to avoid that. Let's have a look at that photo. Actually not too bad. Not too bad at all. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. All right, so that's 30 seconds and that's how it looks at 30 seconds. It's not too bad. To demonstrate what I was talking about with the light trails or the tails on the stars, let's shoot for 50 seconds and we'll see how that looks. So you can see there at 50 seconds, all those little star trails, or tails on the stars. That's something that generally in astrophotography you want to avoid. But if you're happy to, to live with that, you can see the rest of that there, there's a bit more gas in the cloud. It looks a bit better overall, but there's definitely little tails on the stars. And it's basically a, 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 a trade-off, if you like. The longer you leave it open, the more light is going to come in, as in the longer you, so if you if you generally watch a lot of the videos that I do, you you may hear me talking about an exposure triangle. That is the ISO, the shutter speed, and the aperture. On these cameras, on the phones, you can't adjust the aperture. It's a mechanical thing. Um, you can certainly adjust the ISO, and the ISO is how sensitive the sensor on the camera is to light. So when it's really dark like it is now, the more the higher the ISO, the more light it will absorb, if you like. The downside of that is it brings in a bit of static noise like this. When you open the shutter for a long time, it also lets in more light. So if it's a quicker shutter, not as much light gets in. Longer shutter, more light comes in. The downside of that is that although they're a long way away and they seem like little tiny things, the Earth is spinning kind of quick and those stars are moving through the sky also kind of quick. So you need to find a little balance. There is definitely rules around it when it comes to proper photography with proper cameras. Um, so the, the focal length matters. Um, it doesn't so much with the phones. It's going to be a trade-off. Like we can sit here and pick the pixels and say this is not good enough. But at the end of the day, we're dealing with a phone, not a $5,000 camera and lens setup. So there's a trade-off there. Let's be realistic about it all. All right, so you've got the photos on the phone. What do we do now? Let's give it a little bit of an edit, a bit of a touch up in Snapseed, and we'll make it look that little bit better. <laughs> 